Do social media platforms restrict or silence LGBTQ content? Inside Edition spoke to several creators who think so. I cry. I literally cry. In May, Marcy Allen, Derek Van Mull, and others in Nashville threw a prom for B, a non-binary student not allowed into their school prom for wearing a suit. This is about B just having an unbelievable day. That's all it is. It's that simple. Marcy shared that their company's Instagram page was restricted after posting about the LGBTQ event. They just said your account has been restricted and will be under review by one of our community guidelines specialists. They said that I did not follow their community guidelines of positivity 48 hours. I cannot post a caption. I can post a picture with no caption. I can't tag anyone. I can't edit a previous post. This is a story about positivity and love and light, and they are choosing to limit our voices. Marcy had the same problem a month later. So we actually have not had a restricted account since prom May 6th until today. So as we're out here just trying to spread love, it's very frustrating that a major corporation is trying to prevent us from doing that and from silencing us. Marcy did some research. I realized I was not alone and I started messaging with people and it was the same thing over and over and over. Yep, I posted about a drag event that I'm hosting. I posted about a pride thing that we're hosting at our venue. We got silenced. Like it was very just eerie how everyone's story was almost exactly alike. Inside Edition Digital found other examples of LGBTQ plus being restricted by platforms. TikTok, are you serious? You are literally banning us from doing life-saving work for LGBTQ plus folks. Why was this a violation in the first place? We've learned from other queer creators that this is actually extremely common. That trolls on Instagram who don't like seeing gay or feminist content will falsely report accounts like ours. And Instagram is just automatically taking down content. And under this type of content, Hundreds of commenters say the same thing. Comments include, I still have a video where I self-identify as queer, you permabanned. I posted a video of my wife and I going to a pride-themed hockey game and it was removed. And I'm consistently getting my lives reported for no reason. All I do is drag makeup. So is this a common occurrence on social media with LGBTQ plus content and creators? Author Alex Monet says yes. He calls this the digital closet. I'm here to tell you that the internet is incredibly anti-LGBT+. Why it got that way and how we can fix it. Most queer internet users uh, already know this. They've experienced it in their everyday life, whether it's with their own posts or with posts from content creators that they follow. Whereas if you're a straight internet user that isn't connecting with queer content online, oftentimes this comes as a surprise. So why does this happen? There's bias in the training data that the automated content moderation algorithms are trained on. The algorithms that automated content moderation are also hypersensitive. On top of that, the sort of policies that these companies make to police content on their platforms are oftentimes created by a small number of men, often cisgender men, white men, that are at the executive level. Lastly, I'd say that the community flagging features are often abused by anti-pornography and anti-queer activists online. And because queer identities are so often sexualized and pornographied, they tend to be collateral damage in this war on pornography. Alex says this kind of censorship is all too common. I think that in a lot of these instances where queer internet users were having their content censored online, uh, whether it was on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, whatever, they were being told that it was a bug in the system that would soon be corrected, that it was an accident, that it was a one-off case. But you could see this happening systemically across the internet. And there's just case after case like this as you look online, each one sort of more depressing than the last. GLAD's 2023 Social Media Safety Index called social media platforms unsafe for the LGBTQ community. Digital activist Imran Ahmed adds that the platforms aren't just unsafe, they thrive off the toxicity. Their business is addiction. 
They need you to spend as much time as possible watching their feed because that's how they make their money. 98% of the revenue of a company like Meta comes from advertising placed into that feed. And so what they are always trying to do is find the most contentious, the most chewy, the most controversial content because they've worked out that's the most addictive Glad rated various social media platforms focusing on quote LGBTQ safety, privacy, and expression. While no social media account had a score of over 63%, Instagram got the best score and Twitter score was the worst. Anti-LGBTQ plus hate has exploded on Twitter since Musk's takeover. Let me explain. That's the stuff that keeps you scrolling, keeps you on the platform, arguing and shouting at each other and make sure that's seen by as many people as possible. And that's why we've seen such an increase in the amount of hate and disinformation that we're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis, because the platforms amplify it at the expense of tolerance, good information, stuff that might actually be useful for society. What's worse is that Twitter is making millions of dollars from this vile abuse. What about community guidelines? It turns out they're not always correctly or strictly enforced. No one actually checking to see if the rules are being followed. The platforms don't want to invest into moderation, to actual enforcing their own rules with human moderators. So they've been using algorithms. And the problem with algorithms are they're very, very sort of, they, they're very stupid, really. They don't have human understanding or nuance or cultural appreciation. So is no social media the answer? We don't want to get rid of social media. And realistically, you know, you don't turn back technology. But what you do is you start to make it serve society's needs, not just their own needs. Ahmed says people need to ask social media companies for more transparency. So just to give us more visibility of how their algorithms work, how their content enforcement decision works, how do they enforce the rules that we all sign up to on the platform? but also some transparency of the advertising. So how do the needs of your advertisers change the way that you present information to us? Ahmed says legislation is also needed. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk and their friends need reining in. What we need is reform of the law so that these companies are subject to the same negligence laws, the same product liability laws that every other industry is. Ultimately, it comes down to money. It's going to be a big combination of things, right? I don't think that these platforms are protecting us. The only thing that these platforms protect are their profits. And because of that, that means that what they're really interested in protecting is the user engagement on the site and the sort of safety for brands to advertise on their platform. Crucially, the same nonsensical, biased, profit-driven impulses that create the digital closet can and have made other closets political, cultural, racial, geographical, gendered, and it's in all of our interests to dismantle the digital closet, and to do so soon. Inside Edition Digital reached out to TikTok, Meta, YouTube, and Twitter for comment. TikTok said, at TikTok, we're focused on building a safe and supportive platform where the LGBTQ plus community can keep inspiring and thriving. Meta said, we work to provide a safe place where people can connect online to raise awareness, share their voices, and bring the world closer together safely. YouTube said, we're committed to enforcing our community guidelines consistently for all creators on the platform. Twitter responded for our request for comment with a poop emoji. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andreas Wendell.